so yes, this is a workshop on maximising impact and reproducibility of acoustic modelling software. And I'm, I'm Jonathan Hargreaves. Uh, I'm a lecturer in audio acoustical engineering at the University of Salford. And uh, I think most of us are here because we're interested in or do create software. Um, I'll say a little bit more later about who I think we are. Um, but you know, if you're doing that, there's, there's various reasons why you might decide that you, you want to keep that private. Uh, you might have put a lot of work into creating it, so you might want to feel like you kind of hang on to that baby, uh, or you might be thinking about commercialization, which is totally legitimate. Uh, you might be worried about people picking holes in your code. Uh, there's been some high profile recent criticism of this with Neil Ferguson, of course. Uh, but the viewpoint we're kind of really pushing here, and the one that seems to be coming through more and more, um, is that, that we're researchers and it's actually the ideas um, that are your output. So that's what this little graphic on the top right is supposed to represent. Uh, you know, ideas are like the light bulb and if you produce high quality code, so the little guy with the computer in the middle, uh, then what you do is you produce a tool that someone else can use. And uh, this brings us on to, to two kind of main keywords here, which are impact and reducibility, reproducibility. Um, and this ties directly into UKRI's impact criteria. And if you look that up, uh, you'll find uh, this little phrase in there somewhere, which is that activities should be undertaken that shorten the time between discovery and use of knowledge. So we're people who are discovering uh, or creating knowledge, and we want to pass it on to other end users, be that industry or other academics. So that's really what we're talking about today. Um, and then reproducible research is, is the angle about other people being able to verify uh, what you do. So it's worth just mentioning sort of the scale of open source codes we might be thinking about. Um, so first of all, you might have somebody who maybe just, you know, has written a few functions and put them on some sort of online repository, um, maybe like some like MATLAB Central or something like that. Um, next step up, you actually move into structured collections of code. Uh, and I would think of this as being something to do with probably backing up uh, a publication. So if you're if you're publishing some work and you, you want to create a little suite of software that demonstrates that for reproducible research reasons, and that's the sort of thing you might do. Going beyond that, uh, you get into the toolboxes, which is probably what most of us think of when we think of uh, open source software, which is really things that are significant uh, and well thought out enough that they're almost like a sort of engine or a component in something else, they might be. They might not be a whole application, but they could be the. Uh, they could be a, a module in, a, in an application. Or you might get onto the stage where you're thinking about open source software that's pretty much the whole deal. It's almost a replacement for commercial software. And where the uh, difference between three and four lies here is probably a matter of opinion as to what you think is an application or not. Um, but we're more around in this workshop thinking about pushing people who are right on the left towards the kind of toolbox area. So the sort of people, um, and this probably includes myself, to be perfectly honest, who, who might have developed little bits of code or code to support applications to maybe come together and produce something a little bit bigger. And the reason you might want to do that, uh, one is, uh, of course, the, the carrot that is impact. Um, just to produce a nice little stat from one of our early speakers here. Um, Here's some publications from Christoph, and you'll see here that his top publication, which is the one he asks people to cite if they use Gamesh, is almost 20 fold up on everything else. Now you can argue the pros and cons about citing papers um, to, to cite code, and, and I know that Hidden Ref are lobbying on this, but you can see the impact it has. And then on the left hand side, uh, we might get the policy stick um, that you know, quite reasonably, government sort of public funders are asking that research becomes in the public domain. Uh, so they're asking that things be reproducible and usable and easily adoptable. So that's kind of pushing the people on the left, or maybe the people even off the screen who don't even release any code at all, into this bracket uh, of producing reproducible research as well. So we'll hear a, a bit more about what might possibly be coming through on that from from Sarah. So the aims of the workshop um, are to celebrate existing best practice from academics who champion open source. Uh, they're to discover the needs of industry and hear about what software tools benefit them most. Uh, to learn about the national strategy, both from EPSRC and the Sustainable Software Institute. 
um, and then it's to scope out and discuss the support necessary to grow a community of best practice. Now, so this is largely about community and networking, uh, at least the afternoon is definitely going to be. So it's worth just thinking about who we are. So first of all, I'll just say who we are in terms of the organisers. Um, so this has been organised by the UK Acoustics Network. Uh, that's structured into special interest groups. And this is a joint uh, venture between the Computational Acoustics SIG and the Mathematical Acoustics SIG. On the left, uh, you have Nick Overden from UCL, who's in charge of myself and Amelia Gully from the University of York. Uh, and on the right, uh, we have Anastasia Kissel, Dave Hewitt, Ed Bramley and Georg Meyerhofer. Um, I know Anastasia and Georg are here today, Ed Bramley and Dave unfortunately couldn't make it. Uh, you'll see that, that uh, all of us apart from Anastasia, the other four of us will be hosting some of the breakout rooms this afternoon, so you probably have some interaction with the rest of us. Then it's important to just acknowledge the support from VCAMS, the Virtual Forum for Knowledge Exchange in the Mathematical Sciences, uh, who've kindly provided the platform for this today. So if it all goes beautifully smoothly, it's, it's them to thank. Uh, this is being delivered by the uh, team at the International Centre for Mathematical Sciences in Edinburgh, um, such a Dawn who spoke a minute ago. Uh, and you'll hear from their director, P Professor David Abrahams, uh, in a minute. I'd also like to thank uh, Shrab from the Software Sustainability Institute and also Simon Hetrick, who I've been talking to, who've guided this uh, a bit. And then there's who are you? Uh, so who's this community? Uh, who that might they be? And in terms of the computational acoustics SIG, we've recognised that we have two groups of people. Uh, one is power users of acoustic simulation software, and the other is developers of acoustic simulation software. There's quite a, a, a clean divide, an obvious divide in that group. In the mathematical acoustics SIG, we've got, it's mostly mathematicians. It's one of the things that's been interesting for the UK Acoustics Network in my perspective is that uh, it's not just big acoustics groups that are really benefiting from this, it's, it's all the other researchers in different institutions and different departments around the country who they're really bringing together, so that's, that's really exciting. And um, yeah, you get two groups, one specialising in numerical methods and another specialising in analytical methods. And these two in the middle, I would argue, are actually largely the same group of people or, or at least could work together very well. I know that I have always look to work on this kind of interface. Uh, I'm in an applied acoustics department, but I've often worked with mathematicians in an applied maths department. So this is who I think we are, um, and this is who I think we're, we're looking at the community being. So here's the program. Uh, it's roughly broken up into four blocks, inform, inspire, perspective, and solutions. So first of all, for inform, we're gonna hear from Sarah King on EPSRC policy. Then we're going to have five talks uh, sort of inspiring uh, the kind of things that might be possible. I suspect what's, that's what's drawn a lot of people in today. Um, and we've got some great um, speakers, we've got some great sectors represented. Uh, so uh, things like geometry and meshing at the top here, which I think is an important area for synergy, finite element and boundary elements. Uh, we've got geometrical uh, methods uh, and sort of virtual reality real-time applications. Uh, we've got in homogeneous media from Craig Warren. Now Craig's not actually acoustics, he's in ground penetrating radar, but it's still waves in media, of course. Um, at this point, I'd just like to note that when we were first setting this up, uh, we were talking heavily to Ben Cox and Bradley Treby at UCL, who developed K-Wave toolbox. Unfortunately, they weren't able to, to make any of the period that we were looking at here. We have one of the um, PhD students speaking later. And in addition to talking about their software, I've asked them to talk a little bit about how they developed it, uh, you know, kind of what some of the best practice might be, what did and didn't work, what the pitfalls might be, etc. So hopefully you'll learn quite a bit about software development too. Then we'll have some perspectives. Uh, Gregor Tanner from Nottingham is going to talk a bit about his uh, research, but also on collaborating with the Software House, which is another way of uh, putting software out there into the community going to get some early career research perspectives and some industrial perspectives. And then finally in the afternoon um, we're going to hear from the Software uh, Sustainability Institute uh, and also from Chris Cannon who, who's an, a research software engineer who developed a, a similar platform aimed at a slightly different sector. And then we're going to have a lot of discussions with all of you guys to decide you know what is useful uh, to help people do better software and, and collaborate together. 
Uh, that afternoon is, is UK only, I might add. It's nice to have quite a few international participants, but that will be says percentage about UK policy, so it's going to be UK only. Here's the times of all of that. Um, it's quite a tight program, to be honest, to the victims of our own success here slightly. Um, so there probably won't be an awful lot of time for questions in the blocks as we go along. Um, I don't ever feel that this works very well on Zoom anyway, to be honest. But we have what we've done instead is we've timetabled frequent breaks. So we've got two 10 minute breaks in the morning, we've got a 30 minute lunch break. There's another break in the afternoon that's short. And there'll be opportunities to sort of dive in and ask some questions there, either verbally or, or via chat. I'll just mention at this point that um, the Zoom room will remain running all day. And this is a community, you know, please, when, when nothing's happening, talk to one another. It's fine. Use the chat, you know, open up your cameras and, you, and, your, and, and your mics and, and, and chat. Uh, that is absolutely fine. Uh, over lunch, uh, we will even have some breakout rooms available. So if you get sort of really tied into a discussion with a small number of people, if you ask Dawn, she'll let you get a room um, so you can go and do that privately. Um, and leave the main room for other more general conversations. So, so please do take advantage of that. So that's the end of me. Uh, what I'm going to do now uh, is uh, introduce Professor David Abrahams, uh, who's... John, um, it's a great pleasure to be allowed to say a few words. I know time is very tight, so I'll try and keep it brief. But there's basically two reasons that I wanted to come and talk to you today. One is about VCHEMS, which is an initiative between ICMS, the Newton Institute in Cambridge, and also the Knowledge Transfer Network, and a bunch of um, supportive mathematicians from around the country um, who are too numerous to mention. But basically, when we went into lockdown, we felt, well, what could we do as a community to sort of try and keep things going? So we created VCHEMS uh, really the week after lockdown, and it, it has three functions. One is continuity of business within academia and we're math mathematicians primarily but it's it's about knowledge exchange so it's about the academic community who's interested in sort of industrially facing activity keeping going how can we do that and one of the things which icms have picked up most broadly are running these sorts of events one day meetings seminars etc for the community um, Another thing we do is try and business, uh, keep business con continuity, which is really thinking about the activity we do as a community serving industry uh, in the broadest sense, government, etc. Uh, how can we keep that going? And again, this, this relates to that aspect because we want to think about how as academics we serve through the community outside, which software is a big part of that. Uh, and then we also do a great deal of indirect and direct activity um, related to COVID-19 itself. So we, we run a, a number of things, but one of the main things we do collaborative within VCAMS are virtual study groups. So um, if you don't know about study groups in general, I would just put the flag in there that please do look online about what we do. And the virtual study groups have been a terrific um, way of trying to bring the community together and to really think about problem solving with industry. They get a sort of very close engagement with industrial partners. Um, this, this meeting is a sort of one day little version of that. Uh, and I'm, I'm very grateful for you setting this up. Um, so more broadly, what does ICMS and I and I do? Well, we do lots of research related activity to serve the community, um, which are basically ICMS does um, shorter week long workshops when we're not in lockdown. And the I and I does um, um, sh a longer term research programs from a month to six month programs. Uh, and at the moment we have an opportunity of bringing more money in through um, additional funding for mathematics. And we hopefully will be getting um, a green light to start spending that money from the autumn onwards. So really this is an announcement to all of you to think about how the INI and ICMS may use some of this extra money to, to um, enhance our research activities and specifically on the sort of knowledge exchange side. Um, we have got a number of plans, but we're really open to your your um your ideas as well so that's really my main plea is to look on the websites of icms and i and i if there's any one thing you have in mind um drop us an email and we'll respond to you 
and try and get something interesting going. So now turning to the second point, um, I'm been an acoustician, but I'm very much on the sort of theoretical and the analytical method side for all of my career, but I've increasingly worked with industry and many of those roles have been about um, delivering um, a result which can't be just a nice analytical formula, it has to be in the terms of a workable code which can be used and indeed um, I've worked with a number of organisations like Tallis and Dyson in particular. And with Tallis, we had to produce a software modelling tool at the end of our investigations. Um, and our main customer was DSTL. So I'm, I'm really very keen on what you're doing today. I would say that um, those of, 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 of our community work on the analytical side of things. We're very um, uh, aware that um, there are lots of... Um, difficult modeling solutions where software is particularly difficult. So in aeroacoustics and hydroacoustics, you're looking for a very small number from a very large field if you've got flows, etc. So the challenges are what keeps me in a job. And I'm very keen on the development of hybrid methods. So analytical methods and software tools and finite element me methods being merged together. So I'm really a great supporter of John, what you're trying to achieve. And I hope you have um, a very successful day. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.